Hello and welcome everybody um, to the OKD Working Group meeting. I'm going to sub in and chair this one. Um, if you have a chance, please enter your um, details in the HackMD file. And Timothy is noting, HackMD is laggy for me. Um, maybe we should archive this one and create a new empty one. How about if we do that after today's meeting for the next meeting? All right, Timothy, um, now that I've got the agenda in this one. So um, yeah, it could be HackMD could be the universe. Um, so today we are supposed to have a talk on MicroShift, but um, the guest speaker has not shown up yet. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna motor through the agenda and see if Sally O'Malley or one of the members of the MicroShift team um, do, do show up. Um, and um, while you're talking, I will, hello Neil. I will um, motor through um, Slack and see if I can find her online um, and make sure she has the details for getting in because um, Vadim is the one who invited her and sure she's there. So um, today um, we are going to just power through. I'm going to share my screen because it's easier for me. Difference between Jamie and myself when we chair. I um, put the, like to put the agenda up on the screen. Now I can see it and you get to see the rest of this. Um, so Vadim is not here. Um, if you, uh, Christian is, you want to give a quick update on the OKD release on behalf of Vadim, Christian? Yeah. Um, so v Vadim, uh, told me that there isn't much news on 4.10. I think, um, he didn't do a new release for 4.9 this weekend. Uh, I think due to the circumstances, um, yep. In Eastern Europe, so um, yeah, uh, no no big updates from from engineering side here. Yeah, where is Vadim based out of? He's not in Ukraine, is he? Just so he's he's based out of Brno, uh, but he is from uh, Belarus. Oh yeah. well, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that makes it complicated. <laughs> Every everything's uh, complicated over there right now. That's pretty clear on on that. Um, so. Yeah. But it, yeah. Def okay. Definitely so, devastating uh, what's happening there. Yeah, we have to be cognizant of that for all of our colleagues as we have offices in, in lots of Eastern European countries. So, hearts go out to that uh, part of the world. All right. So, um, and anyone else have anything um, to add on the OKD release? People have been playing with it or anything they want to add in? Otherwise, we'll move over to the FCOS update. Um, Timothy is typing furiously. May have to take yourself off mute, Timothy. Yeah, yeah hello. I'm, yes, I'm typing the, the agenda directly in the hack of D furiously, as you say. Uh, so, yes, so not much my side as compared to last uh, two weeks ago. Uh, essentially, you have a bunch of things in progress that will come with the rebase to Fedora 36. So, Fedora 36 is coming, the rebase for Fedora Crest Next is coming along the beta, which should happen sometime mid March, if I'm correct. Uh, if I find the schedule again. Yes, the beta release is approximately mid-March. That's about it. So at this point, approximately, we'll start making new Fedora Next pieces based on the Fedora 36 beta, which will come with the Podman v4 change and the AP tables inevitable change by default. Uh, those two major changes that we're tracking, uh, we've added a docs page here. So uh, the last link uh, in the in list I've made is a new page, new fresh new page that we've added to the Fedora Quest docs, uh, where you can track major changes uh, that we have planned uh, incoming in Fedora Quest. So right now, those are the two main ones, but hopefully we'll have more. And there's also links and descriptions and how to test them um, 
and uh, on Fedora Core's nodes right now, and what to see, when to see them happening, and everything like that, the timelines. Um, so yeah, and apart from that, we have all of the Fedora 36 changes that we're tracking regularly. And I don't have anything else major right now. Thanks. Any questions um, for Timothy from the group? If not, we're going to zoom right along here. Um, no, not not really a question, but I wonder. I think we're still on on a Fedora 34 base in OKD right now. Is is that correct? Um, and an OCP 4.10 is due uh, this month as well. So we might, and I'm not sure if if that's going to be a problem. We might be skipping 35. Fedora 35 then. Um, maybe we'll need to cut a release uh, that is based on Fedora 35 before well, that can happen. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check back with Vadim on, on that as well. And may maybe Timothy, you know, uh, you know anything that might be causing might be causing problems. So I don't know what's the current status of the OKD machine noise content, which release it is based on. I have to check that again. But uh, for sure, that's one thing I wouldn't recommend trying is skipping release. Like, uh, that's definitely something we don't test that much. Rocker is side of things because we have barrier releases for each release. So usually we don't skip releases. Like everybody goes through the, the flow where they don't skip uh, major releases at least. Although we don't really, um, we don't really think of, of the barrier releases. Those might, those might happen within one Fedora major version as well, right? Um, and we, I don't think we've really thought of, uh, of uh, regarding those barrier releases. We just, re because it's a, it's a, a recompose, it's not, we're not really using Fedora CoreOS other than the, uh, for the boot images, um, at least right now, there, there definitely is a plan, and there has been some movement on that too, um, to to not rebuild Fedora CoreOS. Um, and I think with the CoreOS layering effort that's going on right now, that'll that'll be much much easier by then. Um, but in in general, we haven't really been looking at what what is a barrier release and what do we have to, uh, yeah, what do we have to look out for uh, when when kind of moving from from one version to the next um so yeah um i'll mm -hmm. i'll definitely mm -hmm. check back with vadim and uh see it, it might might just make sense to kind of make one last 4.9 release on uh, moving it to fedora 35 and then when moving to uh okd 4.10 also moving to fedora 36 uh we, we'll, we'll see about that we'll we'll definitely uh come back here with some info on that it, can I do something to that? I, I hate, and I, and, I, and I say that with that word on purpose, changing FCOS versions within an OKD release. That breaks so many things, and we've had so many issues with that. If we're going to do 35, can we wait till 410, please? I don't see actually, any reason that why sounds, this would be changed. That, that actually sounds like a something screwed up on on the other side of it because like the fcos people make great take great pains to make sure that there isn't that much of an interface change between fedora rebases so look at four, look at four six four seven when we change fcos from versions 32 to 33 to 34 it broke okd badly I don't see any reason why we should be updating FCOS within a. In a let me turn. Let me turn this question around. Is there a reason that OKD shouldn't validate that the upgrade procedure, that upgrading FCOS releases, should? Is there any reason that they shouldn't be validating that that works? It, it's not. It's not OKD that breaks. It's all the stuff underneath it that. Um, but it's all one piece. That that's. Like the fundamental thing is that when you're, when OpenShift declares that it's going to do an upgrade, like, and, and I'm using the term OpenShift because I'm talking about both sides, both, you know, our cause and, and OKD, uh, our OCP and, and OKD, when OpenShift declares that it upgrades, 
it goes through and actually checks for updates for the, the operating system it runs on, as well as the software it's doing, and it attempts to do both together. And if there is an event where either one fails, it's supposed to stop the whole thing. What you're telling me is that it is not stopping and it is still breaking. So what should be happening is that either A, there's a mix missing in the gap, in the test gap, there's a test gap somewhere, or B, um, something MCO is not, MCD is not doing something correctly to ensure that its settings persist as it upgrades the system. So, so let, me, let me give an example. So, so, so um, EPCO's changed what was a, a, we, a very, very, very small setting back in 34, 35, whenever it was. And it broke the fact um, of being able to do, um, they put a dot in domains, you know, for your Etsy host. That completely broke a whole bunch of stuff. That's not a test case within OKD. It never was, and it probably will, never will be. Uh, what I'm saying is that from my experience, and, and I've been in this now for quite a long time, so, so I, I think I have a right to say this, especially you know, using OKD in production, that when we do an upgrade and we change FCOS version within the release of OKD, we are at big risk and we have seen it over and over again. My preference would be to either have a choice or not to do it and do an FCOS change when we do a new release of OKD. Yeah. So, so um, one John, thing. I'm going to pause for a minute because I know you're on cell phone and you can't see people raising their hands. So Christian wanted to, to say something to that. So let me just pause you. Yeah, I, I, and I, I, I know this isn't on the agenda, but this is just one of those things that's giving that's, me a turn. That's for, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. think so, to the topic. So go ahead, so Christian. You, yeah, I, I'd say uh, we really have to think about um, OKD, not not really in terms of, of OpenShift versus uh, Fedora CoreOS uh, life cycles, because they aren't uh, aligned. So we will always run into this issue. Um, and we do test um, the upgrades from one OKD release to the other. So it is one bundle that is upgraded uh, and tested as a whole. And it shouldn't really matter what version number it has. If the upgrade works, it, we would that would be our signal to say this this works. We can release it as is. And if we now um, move to 4.10 and then with that also upgrade to, to Fedora 35, um, by then Fedora 36 is out. And are we what are we going to do then? Are we going to wait uh, till uh, OK, OKD 4.11 is out to to move to Fedora 36? Um, that because we, we have. Um, an open an open shift release, both OCP and OKD, um, roughly every three to four months, um, and we have a Fedora release every six months. So those life cycles just aren't aligned, and we can't really say we, we move them along uh, together and only upgrade uh, one when we also upgrade the other. So at at one point we'll we'll have to say now we're moving within, let's say open shift 4.10, we move from Fedora. 35 packages to Fedora 36 packages without actually um, adding a, a minor version to the, the OKD version number. How, um, how long is an OKD release supported? I thought it was just until the next one. Well, yeah, it's, it's a rolling release. We don't really do um, releases right. of, uh, of, of the last minor version once we have the next out. So once we so release 4.10, that like only in in emergency cases, um, but really it's a rolling release, and there is uh, just yeah, th th there isn't uh, any parallel streams uh, like you'd have on on the product side. So, so you, if Fedora is supported for a year after release, then I understand that the two don't release at the same time, but whenever a minor version, if if we lock whatever FCOS is out at the time of an OKD minor release, that FCOS version should be supported and updated for the entire life cycle of that uh, minor of an OKD release, right? Am I, am I missing something? Unfortunately, unfortunately Fedora CoreOS has opted out of the full Fedora life cycle. Oh, so, okay. when, yeah, but, um, yeah, but... so that means that when they do the rebase, they stop supporting the old stream entirely. Okay, now I understand. Sorry. Uh, all I can tell you is that from what I've seen in the last year, 
we have we have had many and I've spent many hours debugging changes between FCOS when there's not, nothing wrong with OKD, it's the underlying OS that has that has caused issues in the stability of of OKD. It's not OKD, it's FCOS. That really sounds like MCD is not doing the right thing because it should be forcing the settings and the environment to be correct on upgrade. It, it, it really mostly is things like a new network manager version or a system D version that has some, some change in, in API or some new feature or something that isn't a properly supported, changes something in the output or something. That is what, what most of the time happens because the, the OKD code the, the cluster side, um, that is what we also release as the OCP product, which obviously is very, very well tested. Well, and then how, how often, bundling how that often. together with, with FCOS, obviously, because though th there the, the versions of, of those underlying packages are different uh, in comparison to, to RHEL CoreOS, um, that is what mostly creates problems for us. Well, how often is RHEL CoreOS changing within a release, other than patching? You're not doing, you know, major the, the, the life cycles, Aren't, it's a bit different. It's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the, goes through the same problems that FCOS does, just slower. T Timothy can probably speak to that. Yeah. The the way to fix those things is not to sign and say we stick to a specific release because that's not how Fedora that's not all Fedora CoreOS works. So right now, OKD uses a rebuild of Fedora CoreOS stuck to specific versions, but so essentially you're not using something that Fedora Core has tested. So the way to have this work is to test before, is to put, put the test forward. So put the test forward in Fedora Core S itself, we release ahead of time. So right now we're trying to prepare for the Fedora 36 rebase. So right now would be a good time for QD to take a look at Fedora Core S 36 as a base and see if things breaks in there, so that when we rebase Fedora 36 on stable, then OKD can consume it and right. not break things. So and that's the way we things flow. Unfortunately, we don't, we cannot maintain multiple branches of Fedora Core S on, on several versions because we have a different way of, of visualizing update streams. We don't have, we don't lock ourselves on versions, we lock on ourselves on update testing and next streams. That's how we, we do the Fedora Chorus releases. Right. And and that makes sense. But in this case, then I'm all for going forward, but don't do it with 4.9, do it with 4.10. Mm -hmm. 4.9 is nice and stable as far as I can see. If we go ahead and, and add a new F coast and then all of a sudden it becomes unstable, I mean, basically it makes OKD unsupportable and unusable. So I understand that right now. That's no federal, not a whole federal course works. So if OKD machine OS content want to stick with a specific release uh, for OKD, that's up to OKD, that's up to Vanim, that's up to, to, to those doing the releases. I don't, that's not my decision here, but mm -hmm. that's, you will know, you will have to know that essentially you will be using somebody, something that has not been tested for us by federal course. That's not been tested by us. Essentially, the, 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 the gap here is that we have a separate build system for the OKD machine OS content currently, and we rebuild that, uh, which is essentially a, a uh, CoreOS assembler compose, same mm -hmm. thing that run that makes Fedora CoreOS itself. We do that again. We run that again for the OKD uh, content. In the future, um, there's this, uh, it's called the CoreOS layering uh, effort, I think. Yep. Um, and that is going to enable us to actually reuse what the Fedora CoreOS folks have built and just layer our stuff on top of that without rebuilding the whole thing. And w with that, we can then close this gap in testing um, where we kind of run OKD end-to-end -end tests already when Fedora CoreOS uh, is built and maybe even block Fedora CoreOS releases on that. Um, and that is currently the gap. We, we aren't currently doing um, continuous testing. We, we are doing discrete testing when upgrading. Right. And that is the gap. And uh, there is always going to be um, 
yeah, that, that is all. That that's not great, obviously. Um, and we, however, however, we do obviously test upgrades. We don't release without upgrades succeeding, and that should that is currently our signal uh, whether we can release or not. Um, so, and that doesn't suffice in in some cases, unfortunately. Um, but. Yeah, in the future with CoreOS layering, this is going to be much better. And we will either have to, we can say we, we now hold back the move to Fedora 35 and do that with 4.10, but then we'll have to, within 4.10, move to Fedora 36. Like we can, we, we don't have to align strictly with the Fedora CoreOS release. As you can see, we're currently still on Fedora 34, I think, while Fedora 35 is already nearing its, uh, its end of life. Um, so that is fine, but we, at some point, we, we kind of have to move um, a Fedora major version within a, an OKD minor. We can do that with this release, 4.9, or we can do it with the next. I don't really care. Like, we do have the upgrade testing. Maybe we'll wait and try to uh, get in CoreOS layering before, but that is probably not going to happen before, or certainly not going to happen before 4.11. 4 we'll probably have to do it before. All so I'm saying it's not ideal. ideal. I agree. You'd also need, I, an, yeah. you'd need yeah. a Fedora CoreOS version with CoreOS layering support before you do the 4.11 upgrade, because otherwise you can't stage in, in to, for the reprovisioning. So we would have to move to 36 before we actually start using the capability, because otherwise MCD can't use it. Uh, like, because you create a weird bootstrap problem where you don't have the capability to actually use it. Yeah. About that, yeah, we are. Uh, so, so I'm from the MCO team. We are, we are highly cognizant of that, and we are working on that at the moment. So, so just so everyone knows, because I'm not sure everyone actually knows this, Corio's layering is coming in Fedora CoreOS 36, because that was already an approved feature, and it is intended to land as part of. FCOS 36. So that is coming. Um, so what we're talking about here is essentially the situation right now is OK, OpenShift rebuilds FCOS for OKD. And that means that the content set is not the same as what we release in Fedora Core OS. Right. The configuration is not the same. The packages are not the same. The testing that Fedora CoreOS has done is invalidated. And that means that either, the, there are two real so solutions to this. Either one, the FCOS plus OKD tests are run on the build of that FCOS, which is not happening today. Or two, we uh, essentially stop doing uh, upgrades until we are ready for that transition to CoreOS layering. So, unfortunately, as it is right now, running OKD end to end tests on the Fedora CoreOS config repository isn't really possible because we've set up, um, or Vadim has set up the, the OKD OS builds on an external CI system, external build system. So, we can't just uh, trigger that uh, very easily. However, when we move to uh, CoreOS layering, we will be able to actually build that OKD artifact, the OKD machine OS content container, as part of the Fedora CoreOS build, uh, as a layered product, as a layered artifact. Um, and with that, once that is happening, we, we ha we'll, we'll then have continuous testing for OKD as well. Um, and yeah, obviously, we. Since we do have a signal, it's not the best signal currently, we do test upgrades. So you make, we make a new Compose, and then we obviously test, is that old Compose, the old version that is already released, upgradable to that new one? Um, those end-to-end -end tests don't run on all the platforms currently. They just run on a few of them. Um, and that might be the biggest gap we have. But I don't think we can wait. Uh, and not push out a new release uh, for a long time. You can decide not to upgrade, uh, obviously. Right. Timothy. Yeah, if I could uh, is the, throw in. Is the FCOS 36 stream available yet? No, not yet. We're trying to, the rebase 
Uh, is happening. I'm not talking uh, about the rebase. I'm not talking about the rebase. I don't yeah, care the, about the rebase. Is there the, a code stream available the, now? No. The rebase to Fedora 36 for the next stream is happening alongside the beta release. So it will happen so next week. Mid March. So well, two weeks. So mm. I want to just pause us pause us for a minute. Bruce has had his hand up for a while, so um I'm sorry. Bruce, did you did you want to add into this? Uh, well, no, I just figured I'd throw in my two cents, although many other people made my points, which is that uh, in reality, we don't use FCOS releases, right? We build our own, which may be equivalent or not. Um, and, you know, the uh, if you read the FCOS documentation and then you read our documentation that says we use FCOS, you, you're totally misled because that's not how it works at all. And maybe that causes issues, maybe not. And uh, it is sort of like I went through all the stuff that John went through, maybe not as bad, but I can understand where he's coming from pretty totally. Um, but in the last year or so, um, I have had lots of upgrade issues. Uh, none of them have been obviously FCOS related, unlike the year before that. Um, so, and it, it could be that some of our problem is that we aren't following the FCOS release and upgrade cycle. Okay, we have our own, uh, and so we don't get whatever good testing the FCOS people are doing. But, I mean, there, there does seem to be a plan uh, involving the layering. I've been following that all the way along, too. And... Uh, so the, the question is, how do we get from here to there? And uh, what, I, what I thought might be useful is that uh, we take a lot of this and open a discussion item uh, where people put forward the problems that they've had and the issues that they had, and then that can all get collected in one place, and we can see which ones would be fi fixed by which methods and how we could actually go forward. So so if the, I, the, uh, if, go ahead. If I, I'll just interrupt from it. So, um, on maybe uh, on John's behalf, because I know John's on a cell phone someplace, probably in a car. Um, so the the resolution to this um, sounds a bit to me, and I could be the naive one here because I don't have it in production. Um, that maybe we hold off on going to 35 until the 4.10 release. So the first 4.10 release goes out with 35, um, and then. Somewhere in the 4.10 release, we do a, a step up to 36. Is Christian, is that what you're suggesting might be the process? Maybe that makes sense. So we can uh, at least be, be safe that 4.9 remains stable, and then within 4.10, we'll have to uh, to, to make that leap um, yeah. And, and, yeah, kind of get along. But by then, we, we will hopefully be able to migrate to CoreOS layering. Maybe we can even backport that to Fedora 35. Um, because we essentially, if, if that lands in the Fedora 35 packages, um, we, we will still be able to do our own compose of kind of OKD OS 35, including new changes that have then landed in RPM OS tree, the base. Um, so, 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 yeah. so, John, the reason why I'm trying to articulate this is so that we don't go off and have Vadim create a 4.9 with 35 um, and and we hold off. But that, me, if I'm hearing everybody right, and I often don't, that still means you're going to have the same issues someplace in the middle of 4.10. Is is that correct? I My feeling is that once we release a stable release, well, you know, like 4.9 was released with 34, it should stay with 34. And, you know, 410 may release with 35 or 36, I don't know. But I think once we do a stable release of 410, I, I think we should stay with it. And then, you know, because we are focused on OKD, you know, that, that is what we're supposed to be building everything on. You know, we're, it, you know, mm -hmm. we're not testing, we're not a testing ground for um, FCOS. You know, so once we have a stable release, I think we should be able to keep that. And then when we do our next release, our next stable, our next testing cycle, then we go to the next one. Because I tell you, 
if I do an upgrade and it breaks my production environment, and yes, I realize this is open source software, it's self-supported and everything else, but I'm also a member of this community, you know, and yep. we're trying to push this forward as as a way of, of whatever you want to call it, you know, doing it for free or, or saving money or whatever. But when we make decisions that have the potential to make the system unstable going forward, I have an issue with that. that that's what I'm, but, I'm hearing it loud and clear. Um, yeah, it's also so, worse on vSphere, I think, uh, because vSphere isn't specifically tested uh, by anybody exactly. or anything. So well, clearly, like the production people that are using vSphere. Well, like, so uh, I can tell you straight up, based on my own experiences here, that VMware is explicitly not tested and supported in Fedora. Yeah. Right. So that is a huge problem. Yeah. So Timothy's yeah. Got a, Timothy has his hand up. Yeah. Clear, clearly, uh, OKD is not a testing ground for Fed, for Fedora Core S. Okay. We make really sure that all Fedora Core S releases are stable and tested. So. Once those kind of changes go out, it's without us knowing about them. Because when we know about such breaking change, we make really damn sure that they don't happen or that folks get warned about. So that's definitely not how we work. So the thing is, we don't we don't get to fix issue we don't know about. So we cannot fix stuff in Federal Cores if it's not reported to us. That's why we make damn sure that we have well advanced, well in advance of the releases that we have streams with new releases that folks can test on it. So if OKD wanna step up the testing, wanna step up the stability of, of, of the project, then you have to step in and test all Fedora Chorus release beforehand, like up front. At, at the very beginning where we do them, where we try, like right now, we are looking at Fedora 36. So right now is, is the right time to try OKD with Fedora 36 intent and try and make that happen. And so, yeah, there's, if, if, if sticking to a specific version of Fedora is what OKD wants to do, then it's probably not going to be using strictly Fedora Chorus anymore because we, that's not of all federal chorus will be moving forward. So. So, so, so Timothy, I understand exactly what you're saying, but let me give you an example of what happened. So there was a system D change that was done by a person um, that basically broke resolve.com by replacing, if you didn't, if you were booting from an, uh, from a, a, um, uh, from a kernel boot and you didn't have a domain name, they decided that all of a sudden, well, we're just going to put a dot in there instead of using the default domain. Well, for people who are using OKD, that basically broke their systems. And we had to come up with a fix in OKD to work around that. We opened up a ticket in Bugzilla, and basically the folks who own that basically said, well, tough, we're not going to fix it. So you're just going to have to deal with it. And I have that supporting documentation if you want to see it. So I understand what you're saying, but just because you say that, you know, we we if we raise a uh, you know an issue, it's going to be fixed. That's not necessarily a true statement, and it has made OKD unstable in various you know, and that's just one example. So that's why it, it just it's it's. I think the problem whenever, here is whenever I look at a whenever I look like I have to do an upgrade. First thing you look, I look to see is, is whether, you know, FCOS is changing. Because if FCOS is changing, I'm like, okay, I have to go through a whole different set of testing before I can upgrade. Uh, that, that's all I'm going to say. I, I do agree that this is far from ideal, but I think in the future, when we have that OKD end-to-end -end testing as part of the Fedora CoreOS test matrix, then the Fedora CoreOS folks will get those signals from OKD beforehand. I think the problem here was that by the time that that issue was reported, Dora CoreOS had already been released and everything had already been in place. That makes it really hard to then kind of after the fact fix those things. While if, if you know before releasing both Fedora CoreOS and OKD, Fedora CoreOS would just kind of run a new OKD release um, as a test and end-to-end -end test that as part of the Fedora CoreOS test suite. They, they do that now with Kubernetes as well. 
um, since recently. There have been uh, upstream Kubernetes tests have been added, and the same will be done with OKD. So that there is, so the Fedora CoreOS folks do get that signal that they currently don't get. Because currently we don't have continuous testing, we only have the discrete testing every once in a while when there's a new release being cut. Yeah. All right. It's not. It's far from ideal. I do agree, but we we will have to have make that one jump to get to the Fedora CoreOS layering part, and um, after that, hopefully, this won't be an issue anymore. But there is going to be that one time we'll have to do it now, unfortunately. So the, I I'm going to keep coming back to this just because um I, and I want to so so I I'm still going to put on the table. So for four nine, um just to give John Fortin maybe a break in his production that we hold off um, and keep 4.9 and 34 um, and then some and get with a lot of forewarning um, and maybe some testing in in the 4.10 release when layering becomes available um, we move from 35 to 36 um, but with a lot of explicit testing um, on the part of this group and I think that might be is there any issue with that approach? So there's a couple of problems. One, 34 is about to EOL in a few months. So that's like, even if, so let's, let's say we do this, right? Let's say we do this. That means that we will need to recompose a stable release um, ourselves on a semi-regular basis um, of FCOS. So we need to recompose updates and push those out. Um, we are not doing that right now, and we would have to start doing that now. If somebody is okay with doing that, then sure, that's fine. But regardless of whether that is or is not the thing we're going to do, we can't stay on 34 because 34 is going to EOL in three months. Yeah. So, so we have to do an upgrade once at least. Yeah, now, I the second part of this is... The second part of this is um, there is no reasonable conception I can think of that makes any that I can think of that makes sense for John Fortin to get a response from someone in Fedora, especially one of the core maintainer folks that are working on core system stack stuff, to say screw you essentially like he said it much more nicely but it's effectively screw you um the only reason i can think that is that fcos people aren't actively communicating with these these core stack parts to make sure that the that these things are part of the these are influencing those changes and i understand from what timothy has said over the past few months that this is something that they've been actively working on and i know dusty has kept me abreast of their efforts to improve communication here um i expect that that will improve however it is absolute lunacy um from speaking as a fedora member it is absolute lunacy that we would have a situation where someone says this is flat out broken and there and they tell you you're just gonna have to stop figure it out yourself that is absolutely unacceptable i no. don't care no. They didn't. They didn't say that it was broken. broken. They said that this is, that it's working as expected now, and we're not going to fix it. I think that, that was the system D folks, though, right? That wasn't Fedora Coral, well, sir. Yeah, but that was that was coming through. I mean, whoever did it on you know on Bugzilla, you know, basically said we're not going to fix it, even though it broke specifically. You know what I you know what we had identified. Um, is that. This is a change. We're not going to fix it, and you're going to have to come up with a workaround, which is why we had to come up with that weird script to um, fix resolve um, whatever file it was. Etsy resolve D. Um, so, if there was a dot. Okay, can, can I can, can I just come in and make a suggestion here? So, to me, this is not a problem with what version of F Coffee have or what we don't have. It's the fact that we're not finding the bug. And we've talked a number of times, I'll be in the community coming up to a year now, and we've talked several times about trying to engage community to do better testing. It sounds like if we have a more robust testing on nightlies, 
And especially as we take, say, an, a new update of Fedora, if we had testing on cross-platform for those nightlies, we would find issues like this are much better long before they actually hit the upgrade stream. So I think part of what we need to do is create a plan of how we can leverage the community to maximize the testing we do, both while we're, while we're in this stage and we're building our own FCOS, but then also as we go into the, into the sort of the streams approach. Um, we've had this discussion a number of times, um, and that's the way that we actually, I mean, we could screw up within the build. I mean, we're all human. It's not just an FCOS problem. We could screw up with an OKD. The more testing we can get done on the more platforms, the less likely it is that users, whether they're just hobbyists or production, hit issues. So to me, this is where we should be focusing the effort and what can we do as a community to help Christian, to help Vadim and create a more robust test regime around what we're building. I think you, you yeah. put that very well, Brian, and I was just going to say, and, and that's kind of why the, I keep coming back to this, keep 4.9 with 34, we're going to 4.10 relatively soon, and build in, um, you know, start working on getting some more of that cross-platform testing by the community earlier, um, so that when it comes to the next upgrade mid, mid OKD release, we have better testing and better communication with all of the, the um, upstream communities as well. We've given them feedback earlier on. But I think that might be at this juncture, the best we can relief we can give to those of you who have OKD or nine in production is acknowledge that we haven't got the community test plans in place for cross platform testing and work on that in the next few months and work on our communication with FCAUS, System D, and everybody else. Um, and that would be um, in Rawhide or everything everything else. But acknowledge that we have to do that quickly um, within the 4.10 release. So I, I'm, I think I'm taking copious notes in the HackMD, but um, please add in in HackMD, the anything else that I might, but that's, uh, and so Christian, when it, I'm expecting that you're probably gonna be the one that goes back to Vadim and, and replays this a little bit, um, it, that I just won't, I don't want Vadim to think of doing a release with 4935 and do that extra work. And, you know, the, the I think the best we can do right now is that. Um, and work on our communication plans. So that said, um, I'd like to circle back and bring a little closure and move to the next topic. Um, thank you, John, for bringing it up and saying it out loud again, um, and um, and always being so diplomatic about it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that was diplomatic or not, but it that was pretty yeah. diplomatic. It could have been a lot worse. I, I, I would have used stronger words, John. So by that definition, you're diplomatic. Yeah, there you go. So um, How about passionate. The, so thank you, Brian, also for for being you know so eloquent. Um, that brings us to the docs update, Brian. If you want to give us a quick update on and docs, I know I have another call with you right after this meeting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to keep this quick. Um, we had our docs meeting last week. Um, we are, we have got the code of conduct. It's down to me um, to actually get it live. I'm having some work done on my house. So chaos around here. So I will get it done as soon as I can promise. Um, so that's going to go into the OKD.io site. We've also agreed to shut down the community repo. That's got five documents in. I'm going to move that content into the OKD.io site. We're making plans to create on new Git org and move the content there. And one of the things we're going to do is start to um, reorg the OKD main repo. That's where all our discussion and our issues are. The idea is that we're going to pull documentation out of that repo. We're going to do it in a series of pull requests and anything that's document worthy and all documentation community documentation that we write will live in okd.io obviously the product document um, that's in line with the ocp documentation 
lives on docs.okd.io. Um, so the idea is we want to clean up the OKD repo um, before we actually generate the new org. So what we put in the new org is nice and neat and clean. Um, so that'll basically be the OKD repo for issues and discussions um, with a front readme, which is just a pointer to where other stuff lives. And then the OKD.io would be the source of all our community documentation. Um, uh, what else did we discuss? Um, we now have somebody who volunteered to be our security liaison, and Jamie is working with them to actually um, get some introduction write up so we can actually get that published. Um, and I think that was about all we discussed. Um, we did talk about the new operator catalog, and anybody that wants to contribute to that discussion. Um, use Christian's issue that's in the OKD.io, the OKD repo, sorry. So Christian created a repo of what operators we want to see. Um, so that's where we should go for the discussion on there. And I believe soon there will be some discussions that will be reported back on that issue. And that's all I have from the docs meeting. And um, that person who is the security person is Mohammed, who is on the call right now. And Mohammed. Are you, did you want to make a comment? Yep. You might be on mute, Mohammed. Oh, he didn't get a contact from Jamie. Because Jamie is on vacation in Florida this week and good on him. Um, so Mohammed, expect something next week. And if you don't hear, um, come to the docs meeting and um, we will hijack that and make sure you get what you need. Okay, thanks. All right, um, let's see. I'm going to try and share my screen again here and walk through some any issues that we should do um, quickly. Because What do we got for time left? We got 10 minutes, so good on us. Um, what do I have here? The issues, open issues. Um, I know Charo um, update OKD based CRD build. Charo had um, brought up the issue in Slack somewhere over the past week about not continuing doing CRC builds. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what this issue is about, but um, I wanted to mention that on this one to see. Um, He's right now the sole volunteer on the CRC build process. Um, we were supposed to get a talk on MicroShift, and um, Charles not here, so I'm gonna let you guys continue this conversation. It's not that it's dead; it's that um, the community has an invest in it, as he puts here. Um, so just so that's on people's radar, um, if you have have bandwidth and want CRC builds, we need volunteers. And so reach out to Charo so that he's not the only one doing that, because I think from the conversation, he's doing them, but he's not using it. So um, he's gone to well, see. I, I think the conversation, Diane, was that CRC is too big to be to be useful by a lot of people. And we were hoping the MicroShift or a micro, an OKD version of MicroShift might be a better option. So I think that's why we were hoping to have that conversation. So we can yeah. make the decision to keep supporting CRC or actually formally yeah. place it, it with a micro shift. At the top of this um, deck, uh, the, w, the, the OKD is the slides for, um, for micro shift. I thought someone was going to give a presentation on that today, but the slides are there. My understanding is that micro shift is built with OKD in mind so um uh so i i think it, we already have that um it's just whether people are, are using it i think a few people have said um that they've played with it a bit um i like it conceptually i have not played with it so i'm going to try and get sally or one of the two folks who are in spain who are leads on that to show up to the next meeting to give a presentation on that but um, that was that issue yeah, um, I think that was the major new thing on the issues list, and um, other than the operator wish list, which is 
the perpetual thing on the wish list um, issue. Um, and if there's any updates to that, Christian, I don't think there's an update. Um, and then there's the discussions um, and idea stuff and um, the online assisted installer service for OKD um, was the the latest one that I saw. Um, and that's two weeks old too. And I think that's something that Vadim um, has been working on, if I'm correct, Christian. And he's not here right now, but um, if you want to pile on to that. Sorry, could you could you repeat that? I was that's okay. little... you were distracted. Never get distracted in an OKD meeting. Um, I'm just going to share my screen again. And you can see I, I do going. have an update to share, though. So I've just chatted with Vadim, um, and he will okay. keep OKD 4.9 at Fedora 34, and uh, 4.10 will be moving to 35. And then we'll, we'll have to figure out whether we will either do the move to 36 within 4.10 or we skip a, a Fedora major um, sometime later on. Um, All right, cool. Those, those are kind of the two options. Maybe it might make sense to just skip a Fedora release. Uh, and well, we, we'll see about that. But I'll, I'll definitely, for now, uh, 4.9 will stay on 34, 4.10 will move to 35. Okay. Postpone the pain. Um, yeah, thanks Thanks for doing that. That's a worthy distraction. Um, and I'm just looking at the discussion list. This is the most recent one, the online assisted installer service for OKD. I think that was something that um, Vadim was also. Right, so um, it is possible to to kind of deploy that. Uh, and we, we have a, a proof of concept um, for running OKD or installing OKD with the assisted installer. And there is also the, the assisted installer is kind of two pieces. It's it's an agent that runs and it's also a web service um, that that the, the that, that kind of generates an image for you and um, the images that are then installed uh, call back to that uh, web service and uh, and you, you'll kind of get a status update and, on as a visual on, on, on that website. Um, and that is kind of in the works, but we're not sure. And, and that is, it's even in OpenShift, it's just a tech preview, and we're not sure whether that is going to be productized at all. So uh, we might not go through with that, but we're definitely focusing on this agent driven install, which will make it much easier to install OpenShift um, in general and OKD, obviously, as well, on any platform um, without having to do too much integration work that way. So th that is a focus of ours, uh, having this agent-driven install, whether we need the web service part of it or just make it kind of a uh, CLI thing, um, we, we, we don't really know yet. Um, so I, I would just say uh, stay tuned uh, and watch that issue if you're interested in that. Is there anything else in the discussion or the issues list that people want to raise and discuss today? We get about four minutes left in our hour. Sure. Yeah, I um, I wanted to point out that we have the discussion about um, what what the purpose of our install guides are and and um, how how kind of what format they should be in. Um, I've raised it. Uh, I haven't gotten any feedback from anybody yet uh, who's previously participated in the guide. Um, Brian and uh, Jamie, I think, are here. Uh, uh, Jamie so, is on, on vacation. Um, Brian is here. Um, well, can you can you throw the um, discussion URL into the chat just for me? It's in, yeah, it's in it's in tasks right now. I'll uh, ah. stick it in the chat. Um, so I don't know if this is a case of Everybody likes my proposal, so nobody felt the need to say anything, or people haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, I'm not sure how long to go without just saying, okay, nobody's objected, so the thing I wrote up is the thing we're doing. Right. Um, I, I totally missed that. I was, I was out uh, with COVID yeah. during that time. Um, so. <laughs> I, I do think I, I think I like that, and I, most importantly, I'd like all the guides to be to share one common format. So it, 
you know, so it's kind of clear how to add another one and what, what the actual purpose of, of each guide is, which should cool. be the okay. same purpose of each platform, I, I'd say. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like it. I've just had a very quick look, but um, I'll, I'll review it a bit more thoroughly in a bit. Thank you, and I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I, I had three shots and it still hit me pretty hard, but um, yeah, definitely better now. Thank you. All right. All right, anything else anyone wants to bring up in these final few minutes? Um, otherwise, thank you all um, for uh, participating today. I really appreciate the, the feedback um, and and thanks um, for stepping up there, Christian, and, and doing the back to our discussion with Vadim. So we got that update in this week. Um, there is a docs meeting next week on Tuesday. Um, and the other thing, um, well, that under the docs um, kind of thing is we're looking at doing a, uh, staying with make docs, staying with okd.io, but using um, a bit of outside contractor help to do a refresh of the okd.io site. So it's a little more, I don't know, perky um, or website-y or whatever it is. Um, we have some dollars in an account somewhere that I need to spend. Um, so uh, Brian and I are going to meet with Brandon um, right after this call and discuss you know, that. So we may be bringing back a few wireframes and suggestions for things um, to make it look a little bit better too. So that might help in the usability of the site. So with that, I'm going to let you all go back to your day jobs and thank um, you all again for all of your support and talk to you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Take Bye. care. Thanks, Timothy. Thanks,